Hi, welcome to Shikhan.com. In today's class, we will learn how to format our numbers. And if we ever need to increase extra columns and rows in our data sheet, we will learn how to set such rows and columns. Or if a row or column is extra, we will also learn how to remove such rows or columns. We will also learn about date formatting. So without wasting any more time, let's start today's video. If you haven't already seen my old videos, then check out my channel and get the links and go watch my previous videos on these classes. So in the previous classes, we have already learned that how to create a sales report and how to calculate the balances of the collections received. Now for balancing purpose, we can see the formats given here for balancing, but these formattings are not automated, which means the formattings that we have done if we see it here, there is a comma in between the 50,000, which means it's an accounting format. Similarly, in the February column, now this number does not include any comma, which is because the automatic system is not applied here. So now we don't have to do all these formattings one by one by hand. If we want, we can use Excel's automatic formulas and make the whole document in accounting format automatically. So let's do it now. Firstly, let's select everything. After selecting the numbering format above here, we have already seen how to use this in previous classes. Now here, this bar has many options. Now when I select here, we can see by default it says number formatting. So let's click in the drop down menu. After clicking, we can see our different document formats. Previously, we have already learned that Excel document has three types of content. And as now we are working with just numbers, then our formatting should have been number. We can use number because when we select number, we can already see that automatically two zeros have been added after a dot, which means it is converted to number format. Let's undo this. To undo, we have to press Ctrl plus Z. Let's click on the drop down again. Here we can see the third and fourth options are currency and accounting. Now, if we click on currency, then we can see as automatic currency, a dollar sign has been added to the left side of all the numbers. So if I go to my number, after clicking on it, if I check the function box, then we can see in the function box, there is no change, which means the dollar sign that has appeared is just in the formatting. And this dollar sign will not affect my main number in any way. Now, let us again select our numbers. After selecting, the second option that we have, accounting, let's select accounting. After clicking on accounting, the data that was under January, we can see that it has turned into something like a hash mark icon. So why did this happen? Well, this does not happen because of accounting. This even is not a feature of currency. This actually happens because when we work in a column and the data in the column sometimes becomes bigger than the column. Then we can see this type of phenomenon happening. All the data becomes hashtags. Let's increase the B column like this and make it bigger. Now we can see that our data is back. So what we understood is that whenever we are working on the tables and we encounter such hashtags, then we have to understand that our data is bigger than the box and the table is unable to display us the data first. Okay, so now we learn what is the difference between accounting and currency. When we used accounting, we could see that in an accounting format, the dollar sign comes to the left and the data comes to the right side. Therefore, whenever I press accounting here, automatically my data will come into accounting format. Now, when you see this 60,000, if we see up here in the function box, here we can see that we wrote 60,000 in one word. But if we see the output here, in our output, it has come into accounting format, which means 60,000, then dot, then two extra zeros. Therefore, when we do text formatting like this, then automatically the documents that we have will be formatted in our way. Let's select this bottom side. Select and then press accounting. Then we can see it change to accounting format. Press Ctrl S for save and Ctrl Z for undo to go back. Now, we can see by default it gives dollar sign. Now if we want to change the sign and give it another symbol, then we'll have to go to option. Just below accounting we can see a dollar sign. We have to click on this option. Let's click the arrow. 
Here we can see some default options are present. We will go to more accounting formats. After that we can see here two options have come. We can change the format from here. Like change from two zeros after dot to one zero after dot. If I give the value one and press OK. Then you can see on the data sheet it shows only one zero. Which means the zeros after the decimal symbol can also be controlled by us. Anything can be done. We can give two, three, many zeros. Then after that right below we can see many different symbols are present here of many different countries. Now we can choose the symbol that we want to give in our data table from here. Now in that accounting drop bar we can see there are two options of short date and long date. Now what this does is let's say we give a date to our table. For example let's give today's date 14 January. 2020 enter. Now we can see that if we select this box our date format is 14 Jan and only 20 is written here. That means my formatting has already changed. But if I select the date again and I see in my formula box here it is written 1 then there is a slash then there is 14 then again slash then 2020. So I can see two different formats in two different places. So what we have to do is we would like to change the format to what we want right. Let's select the box. Then let's let's press short date first and see what happens. When I select short date first then we can see that the format in the function box is replicated to the data sheet. But we haven't written it like this way it happened automatically. Now if I press long date we can see that the hashtag symbol is back here. So we know that we have to increase the column first. Now let's increase it to see what's written. After increasing we can see the value is now written here. Now see we can see that it is written Tuesday January 14, 2020. But in the formula box it is written 1 14, 2020. So this is the main difference between long date and short date. So we can see that our output could be different but the format in the formula bar always stays the same. Because to calculate some dates format is very important. And the main output is the only visible thing that you or your client will see. So you can change how the output looks and the format in the formula bar always stays the same. So these are some of the functions we learned in the number options. We will learn more about these in the upcoming videos when we need them. Some of the options here like the percentage or the number format that we did here using the accounting method. If we want we can also write the same format manually in another box. Now let's say we want this format as numbering not accounting. Now instead of accounting if we keep it as general. Now what we'll do we'll use the quad function. Then we can see that similarly as in accounting format like two zeros after a dot and a comma in the thousand number mark a format is formatted like that way. So that means without using the accounting format if we press this option then one individual column will turn into accounting format. The next two options allows me to increase the zeros after the dot. These are not just mere zeros. When we use calculations where decimal points are needed like 10.25 after that 25 there may be many 2's or many 5's after that of which we only show 2 or 3 numbers. So we use these formatting methods to show such numbers as per our liking. So I can decrease it from this option. Ok. So we saw that how to format our data sheet to make it calculate for us. Now we are going to learn how to increase a row or a column in a document. Many a times it is needed to increase a row or a column in a document. So let's watch how to increase a row or a column very simply. For example, let's say we want it after B or let's say after March as we haven't put April yet. We would like to increase a column. So let's do that. So we will simply select on D. Then I would go here insert on the top right side. Insert. Cell. We can see that just before March one column has been added. Now as this is coming before the column therefore what we need to do is click on F then we have to insert the column. So let's select E then press insert cell. Now we can say it is after March. So now if I want I can add April here. Ok. So similarly if I want to add a row here. For example if I want it after 5 let's select 6. 
Let's see a shortcut method for this. Right click on 6, then press insert. Then we can see automatically a new row has been added here. So now let's say we want to delete the number 6 row here. So simply I will select it and right click on it. Then press delete. Our row will get deleted. In the same way if I want to delete a column we will click on E. And from the top right corner if I select the delete option from here. Then we can see our newly added column has been deleted and removed. So we can make our rows or columns larger or smaller as we have seen in our previous videos. Okay. We have also learned how to align our texts in a box. For example, let's do it top aligned. Now if I want center, I can do center or right. We can even make it bold so that our formatting looks much better. Just like we have here total max and minimum. I will select them and make them bold. Let's make this bold as well. So now our data sheet looks much better. So this is how we are going to format our numbers. Manage cell sizes and use the date formats. In the next video, we will learn how to properly design a table in Excel. We will also learn how to use such tables in Excel. That's it for today. Thank you for watching Shikhan.com.